Hi, my name is Bob Grinia and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are looking at the VCS5RT magnetically separated sample and we're going to take a closer look at the cracked sphere and take some more sampling points of its elemental constituents. So here is the overall sample and we are going to take a image of this. And here you can see there are plenty of balls. There's a ball here, there's a ball here, ball here, ball here, ball here. These are our target balls we're looking at here, obviously much smaller than this one. Ball, 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 ball. Ball, ball, lots of balls, ball, and there's some in these agglomerated pieces. So I'm going to save that one there, and we are going to zoom in to our target here. This is our target here, so we will take a image there. Now I have this in the SEM the opposite way round to where it was before and this might cause me a problem with regard to getting EDX samples. We will find out in a little while. using the secondary electron detector sometimes gives us a better idea of the topological structure going on. Of course when we've got the beam energy up this high it does tend to charge it so in order to try and get better imagery we are going to dial that back a little bit see if that actually helps. Let's see. I've changed the setting to conductor, you can see down here, producing quite nice images on the BSE. And we're going to zoom out of that a bit, get those three balls in shot in frame with context of everything else. There we go, like that.
Nice and crisp image. See what the secondary electron image looks like. Take one of that, and I think what we'll do is then send it over to the EDX for examination. So, uh, we want to sample again, and we're going to have this on mass normalization, which is good. There we go, mass concentration normalization. And we will take a spot sample. Hopefully we'll get a good reading, say, here. Let's capture that and see what we get. Oops. <laughs> we will acquire. And Fe is 51% by mass, O 33%, 34% by mass. But if we go to atomic concentration, normalized, it is Fe 20 point, what, 21 and O 48. Are we getting a nice for thousand counts per second, so that's good. And there's some sort of tracish peaks coming through. Basically, it's iron, carbon, and oxygen. So we will take another one here. And we will choose that one and acquire on that. Very similar, really. We'll take another one on top of this as well. And that bit that's kind of fallen in with the inside agglomeration. So definitely iron, oxygen, carbon, and we'll do the last one here of these three. Mm. 
This is the highest concentration of the lot. Very, very high concentration by mass. If we go to atomic concentration, atom percent, look at that. Fifth, 38.27 atom percent. Iron, 14% oxygen, balance carbon, and if we go to mass, 72% iron, very iron. Yep, that last one really is a lot of iron. I think we'll actually do another sample point. Um, can we get one on the edge there, or is it going to pick up something else? Probably pick up something else. We'll do another one here. Wow, by mass, that is very high. I wonder if we can capture one of these cracked eggs, edges. It's just likely to pick up some stuff in the background there, that's the problem. Or over here. This is getting to a really good indication of what the purity of this iron is. Now we have quite a large number of these large spheres. It really would be good to get this under a laser time of flight moldy system, maybe, and try and get an idea of whether this is a single isotope. Is it iron 56? Who can say? OK, so we're going to have a look at some of the constituents in the inside. I'll take a couple of points in there. Let's see if we can get some joy from that point. Yeah, see, it's in shadow, low counts. Not going to be great, but it is picking up the calcium and the silicon in there. But low counts. Where this area is charged we might be have a might have a better chance of getting a decent number of samples not sure there's any tungsten in there it's just because there's such a low number of samples it thinks it's seeing something which it isn't might have to rotate the sample around so we can get a lot of electrons in here to get a very accurate understanding what that is although I do believe that it has got silicon and calcium there <laughs> so we'll try this area it seems to be charged which means it might get some more electrons yeah we've got double kind of electrons here but the story is similar except we're seeing aluminium here instead of silicon being detected although I would suggest that silicon is being detected there we go. Definitely seeing calcium. Can we see more here? Still not great count numbers. More iron in these last two spots. But, oh, lots more calcium there.
Yep, I think I'm going to rotate the sample and see if we can get a better shot of the inside of this, get more electrons coming into it. So I've now rotated around the object in the SEM and I'm definitely seeing these kind of circular sections in this inner crust agglomeration inside the uh, crust rather of this cracked microsphere. Take a couple of images to establish our working area. Okay, so And I think we will go into this area here dominantly. There we go. And this is the kind of orientation and magnification that we will use for our EDX work in a second. Might take a hard BSE image. Really see the crenellations here, can't you? Looks like there's an actual ball there, like <laughs> right there. <laughs> Little ball. Okay. Maybe we'll take that image over in the EDX. kind of hoping that we will be able to get some good quantification of the data in here and it'd be interesting to see if this little ball here is actually iron <laughs> it'll be the one okay so first off this outer piece here is this our high concentration of iron. Well, we're getting a nice lot of counts on that. 6.4, 6.5. Hopefully that means this is nicely illuminated as well. Mass normalization. 50% there in that particular spot.
very similar results on those two pieces of data. Right, so we're going to have a look in the middle here. What do we have there? Are we going to get sufficient data back? That is the question. Well, well, well. My initial gut reaction that that is silicon. Look at that line there. Silicon and calcium. Very different from these lines here. Yeah, very different indeed, the inner contents of this. Look at atomic concentration normalization, that 5.5% silicon, 1.41% calcium and a little bit of iron. Totally different to the outside. And by mass concentration, you can see. Let's have another sample in there. And you can see here this worked by rotating the sample. We're now getting 10 times the number of counts per second. I'm not sure that is actually Why it's reporting there. It's not gadolinium. It's not really seeing any gadolinium, is it? It is seeing magnesium, it is seeing aluminium, and it is seeing silicon. And if we look at atomic concentration here, there's as much, or if not more, silicon than iron. There's more aluminium than iron, and there's half as much magnesium. Very, very interesting internal contents here. Yeah. See? Order of magnitude more counts per second by rotating the sample. So we're going to take another sample here. Let's try this bit. What do we have here? Mostly carbon and oxygen with a fair chunk of calcium. By mass, of course, that's going to come out a little bit more. Quite impressive that spot, isn't it? For its very clear peaks.
wonder if we can see kind of on the edges here a little bit. We will see in a minute. So I think we will do uh, what? No tungsten. So this 8% nearly of silicon, we'll do a little sample area up here. So uh, the big things to come out of this are that areas of the inside have 7 to 8% of aluminium and silicon by mass normalized and up to 4% or whatever of magnesium. And that in one case, sample area revealed 23.6% by mass normalized over a large area, there were some smaller fractions of things like phosphorus, sulfur and potassium, but not really uh, reliable levels of detection here. Phosphorus peak here, the sulfur peak, and then chlorine, and you can see these are going down. Potassium here, calcium, magnesium clear peak, aluminium, silicon, obviously clear peaks, and... Uh, the ubiquitous iron. Interestingly, it does appear to have some copper in here, um, which might give some understanding of where this all came from. So, thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.